Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, more, more indices questions, a little bit different to the ones we've previously been doing. Solve the following. So the first one I have there is um, 3 to the power of 2x plus 1 equals 3 to the power of 7. Okay, so the theory here is, is we make the base number the same, which it is in this case. And once the base number is the same, the only way the left can equal the right is if the powers also match. Okay, so let me say that again. So we know in any equation, the left equals the right. That's what the equals to sign means, okay? The left equals the right. Okay, when the base number is the same as it is here, the three and the three, the only way the left can equal the right is if the powers also match or if they're equal. So what you do is you essentially drop the base number and you say, well, if the base numbers are equal, then the powers must also be equal. So I've literally just taken down 2x plus 1 down here and the 7. OK, so what I've essentially done is cancelled the base numbers and brought down the powers. And then you solve like any other one, you subtract that one from the left or you bring it over the other side and it becomes a minus one. So letters to one side, numbers to the other. And you divide by the number in front of X and you get X is equal to three. OK, and, and just to show you how that works. I'm going to sub it back into my equation. So up here I have three to the power of uh, two threes are six and one is seven. And then on the right, I have three to the power of seven. So that's all you're doing. You're figuring out the value of X, which makes the left hand side um, equal to the right. OK, let's have a look at the other one. So the next one, a little bit harder. OK, uh, why is it a little bit harder? Well, it's a little bit harder because initially the base numbers don't match. And you can't apply this, this where we drop the, the base numbers until the base numbers match. OK, so the first step is to make the base number the same. OK. So two, and, and it's always a small number, you bring it down to like a prime number, two, three, five, seven. They tend to be your base numbers. So I would love to write the 16 as two to the power of something. Okay, so I have two to the power of X minus two being equal to two to the power of what? Okay, so a couple of ways of doing it. You can, on your calculator, do two squared, and you see it's four, okay? You then multiply it by two again and you get eight. So now your power would be three because you've multiplied it by another two. Every time you multiply by two, your power goes up another one. I'm still not at 16, multiply it by two again. So two to the power of four is 16. And you can try that in your calculator. Use this button here. So two X to the box and put in the four, that button allows you to put in any power and you'll see you get 16. Okay, so that is a way of figuring out what is my power. Okay, the other way of doing it is with logs. Um, so you have a button on your calculator. Logs are the opposite of powers. Okay, and, and when you use logs, your answer is normally the power. So if I hit that button, which is right under the on button, and I put two in for my base, what the question is, and I put 16 in here, what, what, what my answer is, two to the power of what gives me 16. So try that in your calculator, put in the base two, and put in 16. This is where your base lives in a log question. That's your base. 
and this is your base in an indices question. Okay, so that's why it's two to the power of, and if you hit equals, you'll see you get two to the power of four. So that is a way of also getting what's my power. Uh, which way you do it um, in an exam doesn't matter as long as you find a way of doing it. So what do I do? I essentially drop my base numbers and I let my powers equal each other. Bring him across and x is equal to four plus two, x is equal to six. Okay, and let's just check my answer here. Two to the power of six minus two is four. Two to the power of four is 16. Okay, let's try the third one. So my base is seven, seven is a prime number, so I can't really reduce that base down again. Let's try writing 49 as a base number of seven. So seven by seven is 49. Okay, so I have two sevens there. I have seven by seven. Okay, if I reply the rules of indices that we're using, can you see that my base number is the same? It's seven and I add the powers. Okay, just a different way of looking at seven by seven. Okay, I also, of course, could go log. So I can go log to the base seven of 49. And of course, you should get this two up here. So try it for yourself. And you should get your two. Okay. Either way, 49 is 7 squared. So again, I'm going to drop my base numbers, let my powers equal each other, bring him over, letters to one side, numbers to the other, and divide by the number in front of x. And that was that one. Right, let's have a look at, at this fourth one I have here. Three to the power of X is equal to one over nine. So you can see I'm getting a little bit harder here um, because I'm using the more troublesome rules of indices. Okay, but where I want to get to is I want three to the power of something being equal to three to the power of something so that I can drop the base numbers and let the powers equal each other. I still need to get to that no matter how horrible the sum looks. OK, so how do we do that? Well, three is going to be my base number because three divides into nine. OK, so let's write my nine as a base number. So three, what is nine? So three on your fingers, three by three, three squared is nine. OK, now I can't equate the 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 powers here and, and by equate I mean let them equal each other I can't do that yet because he's under the line he's above the line so I want to use this rule here okay I'm just going to paste it down here because I'm going to end up using it for them all okay um, I want to use this rule to try and and bring what's on the bottom line above the top. So you can see I have one over a to the power of p here. So to get that a to the power of p on the top line, I need to change the sign of the power. So let's do that to our threes. I left three to the power of x then being equal to three to the power of minus two. Okay. The p here became minus p, the two here became minus two. Now they're on the same line. Now I can drop the base numbers and I get X is equal to minus two. Okay, that's it done. That's you solved for X. Let's have a look at, at the fifth one here. I have five to the power of two X minus one being equal to one over one to five. Again, um, Five is, is a prime number, so it's going to be an obvious base number. So I'm probably going to have my base number as five. So five to the power of what is one to five? Well, let's try five squared is 25. Five cubed on your calculator, one to five. Okay, so I can write this as five to the power of three. 
Okay, and of course I could have done it with logs. I could have done log to the base five because that's what I want my base number to be of one, two, five. And you'll also get your three that you put here. Okay, I need to get that three above the line. I need, to, I need to get this equal to five to the power of something. So again, using this one. So my three here is going to become minus three when I bring it up. So five to the power of two X minus one is equal to five to the power of minus three. Okay, drop the base numbers, they're the same now. I have two X minus one being equal to minus three, letters to one side, numbers to the other. So I'm going to get minus three, he'll become a plus one. Two X is equal to minus two, divide by two. X is equal to minus one. Okay, and you can see, or you're starting to see that when they're fractions, my powers are minuses, okay? And that should make sense from here. When your powers are minuses, you're looking at fractions. See, these are all fractions. So I would expect this power to end up being a negative number. And I got minus two here, I got minus one here. So um, yeah, they're, they're, they're stacking up with what we'd expect. Right, let's have a look at this one four to the power of x minus three. Okay, um, right, so I wanna show you this one. So I'm gonna do it a little bit incorrectly first to show you how you know that it's incorrect. Okay, so four to the power of x minus three, we'll try leaving our base number as four. So again, four to the power of one is four, four squared is 16, four to the power of three is 64. And you can see now I've bypassed my 32, it's here in the middle. So what do I do now? Okay, I can't write that as four to the power of something normal um, because it doesn't divide in evenly. It, it's, 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 it's not working as a base number. So then you ask yourself, could I have a different base number here that would work for four and 32? And, and this is what I meant at the start when I said your base numbers will typically end up being small numbers. They'll end up being prime numbers that have no other factors, only itself and one. So other factors of four are two. Okay, so how do I handle this one? Well, that four that you have here, you have to rewrite it with base two. So just the four, even ignoring this part, four is two to the power of two. Okay, and I still have that power that was there, the x minus three. So it is literally just the piece, just the four that I've written in blue. Okay, it's two to the power of two. So I'm changing the base of that two squared is four. Okay, and that is equal to one over, now two to the power of what is 32? Two squared is four, two threes, two twos are four, four twos are eight, eight twos are 16, 16 twos are 32. Of course, you could go log to the base two of 32 and you will get your five. Okay. So now my, my front doesn't look so nice here. So what you have is a power to a power. So just like we had in earlier ones, that's rule three, where I have a power to a power. A to the power of P all to the power of Q is the same as multiplying the powers. I have two to the power of two all to the power of X minus three. So I need to multiply the powers so that I end up having two to the power of two by X is two X, two by minus three is minus six being equal to, okay, so this one, I need to bring that above the line again, so that two to the power of five under the line is going to become two to the power of minus five. Okay, so you can see I've got more and more difficult as I've gone from exercise one to six. Drop the base number. So I have two X minus six being equal to minus five letters to one side, numbers to the other. 
So 2x being equal to minus 5 plus 6, 2x is equal to 1. Divide across by 2, and I get x is equal to a half. Okay, so although not the minus number I've had on the rest, if you look up here, a half minus 3 will give you a power of minus 2 and a half. Okay, so what does that mean? So remember when I was doing my base numbers and I did 4 squared is 16, 4 to the power of 3 was 64. Okay, well what you have found is that x is equal to a half. So if I sub a half in for x, I get 4 to the power of 2 and a half. Now it will be minus in this case, gives me 32. So you can see why I never got 32. It was halfway between the two and the three here to give me 32. Okay, so that is what you're after solving. Um, but you don't need to do this bit in red. You don't need to, to pass too much heat of it if it confused you, um, because there lies your answer. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies, and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.